She was a favorite of King Louis XIV, and she was a force to be reckoned with at the harpsichord. I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about Elizabeth Claude Jacquet de Laguerre. Elizabeth Claude Jacquet was born in 1665 and was a child prodigy who had learned the harpsichord from her musician father. She performed for King Louis XIV at the age of 12, and according to the Mercure Galant, she sings at sight the most difficult music. She accompanies herself and accompanies others who wish to sing at the harpsichord, which she plays in a manner that cannot be imitated. Those who listened to her also noted her extreme talent at improvisation. She was referred to as the Marvel of the Century. As a teenager, she was accepted into King Louis's court as a musician. As a court musician, she wasn't as tied down as you might imagine. In fact, quite the opposite, it was a boon to her career, letting her give concerts in her home and also give lessons. Her prowess at harpsichord improvisation meant that she was a composer. Her suites for her own instrument reflect the heavily ornamented abstracted dance forms common to French music of the era. She even continued with her career after her marriage to Monsieur de la Guerre, which was unusual for the time. King Louis had lost his taste for grandiose productions, but he still enjoyed good music, and so Elizabeth was a perfect fit for the court. Since King Louis also held a monopoly on musical publication, her works, practically all of which are dedicated to King Louis, received publication. She knew how unusual it was to have a woman in her role, and she took great pride in this. Much of her surviving music exists in very small forms, small dance suites, which are either exclusively for her instrument or included in a starring role. Some larger works have been lost, although an opera survives. The opera is heavily influenced by the style of Jean-Baptiste Lully, essentially the dictator of French music up until his death just a few years before De Laguerre completed her opera. Although highly publicly anticipated, it didn't do as well as she might have hoped it would. For one thing, Lully was still the dominant composer even though he was dead, and since he was dead, the church decided to ramp up its attacks because the church was not uh, collectively big fans of opera. It also didn't really have a great libretto. Either way, her husband rushed to defend her from assaults, saying that the only bad thing about the opera was the fact that the press laid into it so badly. Undeterred, De Laguerre wrote some of the first French trio sonatas, a genre that had, up until that point, been pretty much exclusively Italian. Through years of personal hardship characterized by the deaths of many loved ones, including her husband and her ten-year-old son, who showed promising talent in music, she continued to compose and give lessons, and continued to be a favorite in the French court. After her death in 1729, a commemorative medal was issued, but as with many female composers, her works were slowly lost to public knowledge. It has not been until recently that her music has seen a revival. Her collected output is a combination of both French and Italian styles, as evidenced by her trio sonatas. In his Panasse et François of 1732, the scholar Evard Titon du Tillet wrote of Delaguerre, One might say that never has a person of her sex had such great talent for the composition of music, and for the admirable manner in which she played on the harpsichord and on the organ. Mm -hmm. 